Syncope is the medical term for fainting or loss of consciousness. It is caused by insufficient blood flow to the brain. Syncope is the most common medical emergency in a dental office, accounting for over 50% of all emergencies. With proper awareness and training, dental staff can learn to identify, prevent, and manage syncope in their office. There are both psychological and physical factors that can cause syncope. Psychogenic factors include fright, anxiety, stress, pain, and sight of blood. Physical factors can include standing or sitting for a long period of time, hunger from dieting or a missed meal, exhaustion, poor physical condition, hot human environment, elderly patients, and males ages 16 to 35. Males ages 16 to 35 tend to suppress fears and anxieties, making them more prone to experiencing syncope. This is often referred to as macho man syndrome. When I walk in the spot, yeah. this is what I see. Okay. Everybody stops and is staring at me. I got passion in my pants and I ain't afraid to show it, show it, show it, show it. I'm sexy and I know it. The medical history form is a great way to gauge the anxiety and fear level of your patients. Pay attention to responses to questions such as, are you nervous about dental treatment today? Have you ever had a complication from a dental treatment? Have you ever had a bad experience during a dental appointment? Have you ever fainted? Remember, patients may not always be completely honest on their medical history form, so it is important to assess physical symptoms as well in order to prevent syncope. I think you gave me the wrong form. It's asking me if I'm pregnant or trying to get pregnant. Fainting dizziness. Hmm. You told me your number was here. Artificial joy? No. Bruise easily? No. Chest pain? Don't think so. Fainting dizziness? Negative. Herpes? No. It's gonna be hot. Actually, yes, the doctor is with a patient right now, so if you could have a seat, he'll get to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, working. 
Would you like to hold this for me? He's working Friday. So if I get in a bar fight when there's a tooth, I can come in. He'll be working. What, what's your name, darling? Uh, darling. Darling, yeah, I like that. She's sweet. Cute little thing. Clinical signs and symptoms of syncope include loss of facial color, heavy perspiration, increased breathing, high blood pressure, dizziness, and nausea. Learn to recognize these warning signs, even if your patient claims to be fine and does not admit to anxiety. Hi, Max. I'm Dr. Cole. How are you doing today? Uh, good. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Is this, this going to hurt? Are there going to be lots of injections? No, you know, we're going to take well. You're not going to feel anything. It doesn't look like you have any contraindications today to your treatment. Um, so let me just tell you what we're going to do. Okay? I'm going to take this needle right here, and I'm going to stick it in your gums, give you a little bit of anesthetic. Okay, then I'm going to open up the tooth with my drill. I'm going to drill it out. I'm going to scrape out the canal, scrape everything out of there, then I'm going to fill it. I'm going to plug it up. Okay? Then we're going to be fine. You ready? We're going to go. Uh, um, All right, Max, open up. Okay. Max? Max, can you hear me? Max? Is he having a seizure? No, he's experiencing syncope. He just passed out. Darlene, I need to go and get the event. Okay, Max. Okay. Okay. Okay, I have the emergency kit with oxygen and ammonia. Okay, good. We're going to lay in supine and position his feet a little bit higher than his head. We're going to open his airway. Okay. I need you to wave the ammonia under his nose. Okay. How are you doing? Good. 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 You just passed out from it, okay? No, no. Yeah. Not you did. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to give you a little bit of oxygen. Don't pass out. Okay. Okay, don't worry. We're going to give you some oxygen. No oxygen. And we're going to keep you laying here for about 10 minutes. You're going to lay with me? Okay? Be right here, Max. You're going to lay with me? I'll be right here. Okay? I'll scoot over. I'll be right here. Thank you. Darling, can you check his vitals? During unconsciousness, patients may have altered shallow breathing, appear death-like, have slight convulsive movements or twitching, experience partial or complete airway obstruction. If your patient falls unconscious, Assess their consciousness by asking, are you okay? Position your patient supine with their feet slightly elevated. Assess and open their airway, loosening collar if necessary. Give aromatic ammonia, monitor their vitals, and administer oxygen. If your patient recovers immediately, postpone dental treatment and keep them supine for at least 10 minutes. If their recovery is delayed, activate emergency medical services. Max, we're going to send you home today because you fainted. Okay, we're not going to continue with the procedure. Yeah. I'm going to have your girlfriend pick you up. Me? I don't want you driving. You can't give me a ride home? I cannot give you a ride home today. I'm going to have Belinda up at our reception area reschedule your appointment. I'm, I'm going to give you 24 hours. She's hot. She's very good looking. Thank you for noticing. She's going to reschedule your appointment to give you 24 hours to recover. And I'm going to give you a prescription for Valium. That way the next time you come in, you'll be a little more calm and you won't be so anxious. I am going to okay. get along well. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Max, do you have any questions before you leave today? Are you free for dinner? I'm not, but thank you for asking. Thank you. Remember, Max, it's okay to feel have fears. It's very common. So well, there's no need to be embarrassed about it, okay? Yeah. And it's very important to, to note that on your medical history so that we know ahead of time, okay? Okay. okay. We're here to help you, Max. Okay. Kind of embarrassed. Okay. High five. Okay. Postural hypertension, also called orthostatic hypertension, it is a decrease in blood pressure resulting from raising the body after having been in a lowered position for a period of time. The body is not able to adjust to the sudden change in position and the brain has a temporary shortage of oxygen. Postural hypertension is not the same as syncope. It is not associated with fear or anxiety. Predisposing factors include certain drugs, especially antihypertensives, tranquilizers, and those used for psychosedation, advanced age, 
laying down for a long time, pregnancy, and varicose veins. What an afternoon, huh? Crazy. Oh well, my gosh. we're almost done for the day. Okay. But okay. we just have to go dismiss Mrs. Typo. Uh, okay. She's over in Operatory 3. So okay. Go she's all done? She's yes. Done. All right. Thank you, darling. Alright, Mrs. Hypo, are you ready to go? Yeah, I got, I got this bridge. I know, that was a long appointment this afternoon. I know, you know. I know. Did that did that volume help you feel nice and relaxed today? A little bit. A little good. Bit. All right, we'll just check it out one more can, one more time. Can you open your mouth for me? Okay, everything looks good. I'm gonna bring your chair up. I'm ready. Bridge game. I gotta go. I know, but I want to bring your chair up first, Mrs. Hypo. Oh. Signs and symptoms of postural hypotension include rapid loss of consciousness, blurred or tunnel vision, lightheadedness or feeling of blacking out. Mrs. Hypo? What, what's going on? Faint. You look sorry. Faint? Okay, I'm right hot. here. Okay. okay, let's bring your legs back around. I think you're experiencing postural hypertension, which can happen when you try to change positions too quickly. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to have you sit down for a minute. Okay. I'm going to bring your chair up slowly, allow your body to adjust. Okay? Alright, take some deep breaths. Take, you, you, you take too long here. You take too long. We try to be thorough, Mrs. Hypo. Thank you for your patience. I'm going to bring your chair up slowly, okay, and just sit there. Back in the day, they never used to take this long. I know, I know. It's a new day, isn't it? Sure. Prevention of postural hypertension includes asking questions on the medical history form, such as, are you taking any medications? Have you had any fainting or dizzy spells? As well as a thorough physical exam and taking of vital signs. If blood pressure is low, the patient may lose consciousness more easily. Dental therapy considerations include shorter appointments, two to three postural changes to return patients to the upright position, and standing near patients as they rise from the chair to prevent injury. Do you feel like you're ready to stand up now? Okay, we're gonna do it slowly and I want you to hold my hand. Okay? Spaghetti night. Is it? Spaghetti night. Yes. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. I hope you enjoy that. Mm -hmm. They right. can be late to spaghetti night. There we go, Mrs. Hypo. There we go. Okay, and I think Darlene gave you your post-op instructions. Yes. Right? We have your water right here. But mine is very close It was so nice to see you today, Mrs. Hypo. Thank you so much for coming in. We're going to see you in a while. We're going to see you in two weeks. Yeah. Remember, you have another extraction in two weeks. Remember, syncope and postural hypertension in the dental office can often be prevented if the dental staff is diligent about the medical history, vital signs, and physical assessment of their patients. Because syncope and postural hypertension are common and cannot always be avoided, every member of the dental staff must be prepared to manage these types of emergencies. With the proper knowledge and preparation, these types of emergencies do not have to become life-threatening. Don't wait. Make sure you are prepared today.